it's me back again with another video hope you enjoyed the last one the base tutorial it did occur to me though that we'd focused a lot on the sort of like younger instagram trends of uh base laying foundation contouring etc uh, obviously uh, sort of like if you're in your 20s it's perfectly acceptable to do all those things and have all that stuff on your face that's great but when you get a bit older and you start to get a few more fine lines you start to get wrinkles under your eyes wrinkles in your forehead like me i have a wrinkly forehead <laughs> uh, and smile lines things like that 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 excess product that you're putting on like with the baking and the crap loads of concealer under your eyes that um, they tend to that product tends to sink into the fine lines and then everything's just exacerbated ultimately what you end up doing is, is making yourself look older rather than younger um yeah so that occurred to me and i thought you know what we need to do a video that's um that's targeting mature skin and when i say mature skin i don't mean just like you know 50 60 i mean as of 30 my skin started to change and you will notice that your skin changes whether that be the texture or the the you know the the lines the elasticity uh, for instance i know that my skin has got a lot drier over the last few years so i've changed up my moisturizing routine my cleansing routine etc just to give my skin a bit more moisture and it changes everything if you look after your skin so that's the first step that's where you need to start so let's get into it then i've got nothing on my face today i've just done my eyebrows put some eyelashes on so i don't look completely awful for this video um so yeah we can start with the basics and the first step like i say is skincare now as i mentioned in the last video moisturizing priming are technically the same thing as long as you've got a really decent base on your face something that's going to moisturize your skin something that's going to give it a bit of a glow and it will show through the makeup as well and also help the makeup stick i've been using this for a little while it's the nivea q10 power anti-wrinkle day cream with the spf 15 and what i like about this is it's pore refining as well because i do have some large pores on my nose and sort of like in the, the fronts of my cheeks there and i've I found that this uh, face cream does help to sort of refine those it, it gives like a bit of a blurred effect like i said last time you can never get rid of those pores if they're there they're there but you can make them look less nasty so um a pore refining cream like this does the job blurs it out that's fantastic um and it's also a fantastic moisturizer and like i say it's got the spf in it so um you've not got to worry about skin damage so that covers your face Obviously, you can use any face cream that you want, any day cream that you normally use, whether that's just a simple moisturiser. And I literally mean like the simple brand moisturiser, because I used to use that a lot um, until I noticed that my skin needed a little, little bit more, um, which is why I switched to this. And I like this under makeup because it doesn't leave like a really greasy film on your skin either. Um, and also... You know not just on your face you do have to think about your eyes as you get older the skin under your eyes goes thinner and drier and any concealer that you put on there is going to look nasty it's going to look cakey it's going to look thick and dry um, and not very attractive so a decent eye cream under eye cream and i did mention the ola hendrick henrickson products last time and i do use those regularly but i just wanted to give you an idea of other ones that you can use um cheaper uh, drugstore versions this one is the l'oreal revitalift eye cream and it contains hyaluronic acid and things like that everything that's good for wrinkly skin again whatever your favorite is whatever you're used to using a decent day cream for your skin and then top it up with an under eye cream and um i'm gonna put those on now i think while we're talking so that we can move on to the other products and oh, there's no fancy way of doing it dabbing it on there and rubbing it in i learned my lesson from last time and i haven't put any lipstick on this time <laughs> so i don't have to mess about with it i know i've still done my eyebrows but they're easier to to get around <laughs> never for forget your neck either because that can go wrinkly too <laughs> And then just a dab of eye cream 
and you really don't need a lot you don't need to put loads on just a few dabs under the eye and that'll be enough to go on the eyelids as well and I kind of just rub it in The more moisture, the better. That's going to make a massive difference to your skin and the way that the makeup looks on your skin. Um, as I spoke about last time, the Embryolisse Moisturiser is one of my favourites and I'm going to use this again today. Um, like I said last time, it's been look fantastic for about £13 and it's a fantastic investment. It really does make such a massive difference. Um, but it's, it's helped improve the overall tone of my skin as well. Um, I don't feel like my skin is as dry as it was before I was using it. And I'm just going to put that on as well over the top of those other two products that I used. Like I say, the more the merrier. So there we go. So that's the, the moisturising step done with. We've used the, the Nivea face cream, the L'Oreal eye cream, and then my favourite Embryolisse moisturiser. Like I say, it's perfectly acceptable to use as many different ones as you want. Uh, but it is important thereafter to use a primer. And uh, that can be any primer. Like, you know, I love using the, the Nivea Post Shave Balm. That's one of my favourites. That still stands. Mature skin, young skin, whatever skin you've got, you can use that. It's fantastic. You want something that's a radiance primer or a brightening primer to show underneath the foundation um, to make your skin more radiant and glowy and that will help distract from the wrinkles and the fine lines and things. What I'm really liking at the moment is this uh, Revolution Pro Radiant Peach Primer. It's a brightening primer um, but it contains lots of good stuff and it's got sort of like an orangey colour to it and the orangey colour I find always helps work with my dark circles to cover them but it also gives a radiance to your skin. So it might look, look a bit scary when you put it on and you sort of got an orange face, but trust me, you can't see that under the foundation. So once we've blended all that in, like I say, you can't really see that orange. You know now it's blended in, it doesn't sort of look orangey, but um, it does help disguise those dark circles a little bit because it just has got that small amount of pigment in. And like I say, anything that's brightening or radiance has glowy on it, anything like that, illuminating, they're going to be good things that are going to cover, well, not cover, but they're going to um, lead the eye away from any wrinkly parts or, you know, sort of like the things that you don't want people to see. They will uh, deter the eye from any blemishes. And like I say, the Revolution Pro Primers, they do quite a few different ones um, to match different people's skin complaints um mature skin i'd recommend either this one which has got the sort of like peachy base to it or they do a radiant one which has got sort of like a cool pinky base to it it depends what color skin you've got really if you sort of if you've got a yellowy more yellowy tint to your skin like i have then the peach one will work better so on to the next step then once we've got all that on that's all the priming and the moisturizing done so the skin is looking nice and subtle and soft and there aren't any dry patches once you've done that, you've done your very best and that's all you can do um, in terms of a base. It's up to the foundation next. And for a budget option, my favourite one for mature skin is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. Um, these are about a tenner from Superdrug or Boots. So they're dirt cheap and they last quite a while. You don't need to use too much. They're also buildable, which is good if you want a natural lightweight foundation that you want to be able to build in certain areas to cover different things like blemishes or freckles or under eye circles or whatnot. So the fact that it is uh, is buildable is what makes it one of my favourites for more mature skin. And it's got a sort of luminant, luminous um, quality to it. And again, like I said, with the Radiant Primer, that's something that's going to distract away from any wrinkly areas. And I like to put it on with a, a damp beauty blender. Again, I'm going to use my little Jeffree Star beauty blender there. I say little, it's not little. Um, because, especially a damp one, when you put the product on the back of your hand, like so, just a few pumps, and you pick it up with the sponge, when you then 
putting all that product on that sponge onto your face, the sponge will absorb some of it. So you're not going to get a really thick layer and you can just build it up. I'm going to pop this all over my face. Just one layer to begin with. Once we've got a full layer on the face, I then go back in with another pump or two and build it up in any of the areas that I feel need a little bit extra coverage. So for me personally, that would be under my eyes. And again, if your eye is your main area of concern, then don't put too much of that product on there. You don't want to put too much foundation on there because you're going to go in with some concealer anyway um but if you like me and you know I don't find that my eyes are too wrinkly but they are very dark I like to just add a little bit extra coverage with another layer of foundation over it and it's super buildable and super blendable the L'Oreal True Match foundation so you're not going to get that thick cakey look out of it it all kind of melts together really nicely of course, there are lots of other foundations you can use. Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation is another good one. Um, NARS Radiant Foundation, that's another one. Um, uh, the Armani Luminous Silks, that's another good one. Again, they're more sort of like high range, um, expensive foundations. So they're good if you want to make a little investment into it and you know you don't mind spending all that money because it can be 30 40 pounds sometimes up to 50 pounds so you know if you don't mind spending that money then that's absolutely fine but for me personally with the rate that i go through it um for clients is why i like something a little bit cheaper right next step is concealer now this is super different to the sort of younger insta trend uh way of concealing because a lot of people have got into the habit of using a lot of concealer underneath the eye. You know, we make the sort of like upside down triangle and that's great and it looks good on your 20 something skin. But on the older skin, it's just a lot of excess product underneath that eye that's going to sit in those fine lines. So it's better to be more subtle with it. And I just used a couple of scoops of that concealer on the back of my hand. I'm using the Barry M All Night Long Concealer in Oatmeal which is a shade lighter you can still follow that rule of thumb a shade lighter that's still okay um than my natural skin tone because we are going to use it to highlight just not in the same way and i'm going to take it on a smaller beauty blender that's also damp i'm going to take it just like we did with the foundation off the back of my hand and go underneath my eye now i would strongly recommend not going all the way up to the waterline with the concealer this time because that's where we all sort of have those little lines and you don't want it to sit in there. Potentially it's going to be covered up anyway when you apply um, eyeshadow and whatnot over the top. So you're not, and it's covered by lashes anyway. So to avoid that sort of wrinkly excess product build up, then, you know, don't take it that far up. I get a lot of darkness right in the corner of my eye there. So I like to pull it into there and over my eyelid as well, because you know, they, they look quite perfectly. They just look like I've got big bruised black eyes all the time. People must think I have a terrible husband. <laughs> or I have terrible children because I don't sleep at night. I assure you I do. I think I said before, I could sleep so much and I'd still have black eyes. And then onto the other eye.
So as you can see, I've, I've not used a lot at all. A couple of sweeps on the back of my hand and I've put it on with the sponge. So the sponge has absorbed most of the concealer rather than it being on my eye. There's just a very fine film of it, which has been enough to give me the coverage that I need, but it's not going to then sit in those lines. And because we've not used so much concealer, we don't need to bake it because there's not a lot of excess pro product to be so soaked up by the powder. Um, so when we go ahead and powder it, it can be a very light dusting, um, which again, a lot of powder will exacerbate any fine lines. So it's better to use cream products, which brings me on to the next step, contouring and blush. Again, you'll notice that I've not concealed the normal areas that I do when I highlight down the centre of the face and that's because same as I say we don't want to put too much product on so if you don't need the extra coverage there then don't use the concealer to highlight just go under your eyes with it for that little bit of extra coverage right contouring um, a product that I really like is the Barry M Chisel Cheeks. It comes in a set. There's a highlighting stick and a, a contour stick. I don't use the highlighting stick. I just use the contour stick because I really like the colour. It, it suits most skin types and it's one of the best um, contouring sticks that I've tried. So you can also use a foundation stick in a darker shade uh, if, you, if you find one that's a, a nice colour match for you. You don't want anything that's going to make you look muddy or anything that's going to make you look orange. I've got an itch on my face. <laughs> so I'm going to take that contour stick, I'm going to put it on my hand like this, give it a good whiz around on my hand to get the product on there. And then I'm going to use, I've got a little fluffy brush here, like a, a blush brush and it's slightly angled. I'm going to use that um, to do the contour instead of a powder contour and we're going to do it in exactly the same format as we did the contouring on the previous video with the powders so along the the cheekbones there I'm going to do that on both sides try not to rub too harshly either with the brush because you don't want to pull that foundation off and again we're going to blend upwards with it sort of into the cheeks and then up into the temple. The way you contour is going to be very much dependent on the shape of your face, but I tend to find that for most people, sort of bringing it up in that, that direction is the most flattering. And just blend it in so there are no harsh edges. And then on the jawline, just right on that bone, on the jaw there. We don't want to go too much underneath or too much over the top, just right on the bone. And blend it out. And we're going to do that right the way around the jaw. Again, as before, if you've got that double chin that you want to contour away, then you can go backwards a little bit. And then into the hairline as well on the forehead. Remember the three finger rule. If you've got a forehead that doesn't reach three fingers, don't contour. But if your forehead's bigger than three fingers, then contour it away. And we're just going to go all around the hairline. And then I like to bring it in just a little bit over the brow there. And make sure there are no harsh edges. And I kind of do it I kind of do it in patting motions rather than sort of like sweeping motions. I do sort of sweeping motions up and down the cheek there. But when I'm working on the forehead or the jawline, I tend to sort of like pat it to blend it out better. Because then you're not moving it, you're not pulling it off and you're not disturbing the foundation underneath there.
And the good thing with the contour sticks is that you can build them up. So depending on how heavy you like your contour, you can start with you can start with that fine fil uh, fine film of it, and then sort of build your way up to a stronger contour depending on how much you like. But especially for daytime wear, I don't tend to like it too heavy, and I think it looks a lot more flattering. You know, less is more. It looks a lot more flattering if you've just got the right amount rather than going OTT with it. And then because I like a good nose contour, I do go down the sides of the nose with it. And you might want to use a smaller brush. But for me, I kind of just use the edge of the brush just to go from top to bottom, right into the brow and all the way down to the tip. And I kind of just use the edge of the brush there. on the tip of the nose and then under the lip. Once you're happy with your cream contour, <coughs> You can then go ahead and do your cream blush and I, I've actually struggled to find a nice cream blush to be honest I don't think I don't know if many companies um, produce it anymore they used to it used to be quite popular but I haven't found many just recently unless you're sort of going to go hunting online but if you're looking at going into a shop and buying it one that I did find though was the collection speedy blush we had it in one shade which is tickled pink number one um, but again, blush is blush, isn't it? And I, I find that, you know, most blushes tend to work dependent on how much you use. So I go in again on the back of my hand with that, put quite a, a substantial amount on. Because obviously the, the brush is going to blend it out. And then dip in with the brush there. And then you just want to sort of smile again so that you can find those apples of your cheeks and it's just really at the front. And once you're satisfied with the depth of colour that you can then go and blend it out and I like to sort of bring it outwards a little bit. You certainly don't want to bring it inwards onto this portion of your face because that's where you've highlighted with your concealer. So once we've applied the blush, I just go back in with my beauty blender and instead of on the side where I applied the foundation, I turn it over to the cleaner side and then I just go over those products that we've just applied, the blush and the contour, just to make sure it's all evened out. Just sort of gently tap it on there just to make sure it's all blended properly. And, you know, just to push everything into the skin. So once we've finished with the cream stage of things, um, I like to just go underneath my eyes with a bit of powder. And I'm going to use my favourite, the RCMA No Colour Powder. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in the lid. And I go back in with my tiny beauty blender just to make sure that it's not creased up before we put the powder on. And I'm going to take um, a small fluffy brush. This is the PC17 from the Peaches and Cream. I think it's actually a highlighter brush, but I'm just going to dip that into the powder, tap off any of the excess, just so we've got a small amount on there. I'm just going to brush that lightly underneath the eyes. And that's just going to set that concealer that we put under there and stop it from moving around. So we've just done a very light covering of the powder there. Light dusting. And then we're going to go ahead and set the rest of the face. And I just like to use my 
bigger powder brush for that. This is the PCO4 from Peaches and Cream. Again, if you're looking for some new makeup brushes, go and have a look on the Peaches website. Their brushes are phenomenal. I'm going to dip that into my powder and just tap off the excess again. And I'm just going to go on the areas uh, where I tend to get a bit oily. So on my chin, um, I do sort of go oily on my cheeks as well. Okay, basically everywhere. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm not pulling it around or swirling it around or anything like that. I'm just dusting it on lightly, just tapping it on. Once you feel you are sufficiently powdered, the last step is highlighting and Again, we're going to go in with some highlighting drops. These are the Revolution Liquid Highlighter Drops, and I absolutely love these. I did speak to you about them last time, and I said I couldn't find my gold shade, but I did. Uh, this is the Euphoric Gold. I'm just going to... You've got to give these a good shake to stop them from being glittery, so you've got to sort of like really mix the product up. So give it a good shake, and then you just want just a drop of it on the back of your hand there. Dab our finger in just like this. We don't want too much on there. And we're going to go across the top of the cheekbones with that. You just want to dab it lightly. Just keep sort of spreading it up and down the cheekbone, tapping it lightly because you don't want to, because it's a liquid product, you don't want to then go and disturb the... Um, your foundation and your contour and all that goodness that you've just put on you don't want to take it off so you just want to tap it lightly with your finger and onto the other side and then cupid's bow again tap lightly A little bit on the chin there. Tip of the nose. And a little bit down the bridge of the nose as well. And that little place that I like above the brow, at the end of the brow there. I don't know why, why I like to highlight that little bit. I just do. Same as I say, everyone, everyone's face is different. You just highlight the the um, highest points of the face. Again, you can build that up to be as nice and glowy as you want. Sort of one layer is normally enough for most people, but as you know, I like a strong glow. I like to bring that into my brow bone as well. I like to just go back in with my beauty blender again on the clean side. Uh, I don't go over that highlight that I've just put on. I just go under it, which is basically just to blend it into the rest of the contour. So I don't really want to go over it. I just want to go under it slightly. Same as I say, just to blend it in. And there we go. And just one final little thing for my lips is I came across this lip prepping potion. It's the Pout Perfecting Potion from W7. It's a brand that I don't tend to use because I find that the makeup is pretty um, tacky most of the time. However, this stuff is fantastic because of the hyaluronic acid in it. And just remember that, hyaluronic acid, because anyone with maturing, aging skin, that will be your best friend. A little dropper of that. And apply a little bit of that to my lips. And rub it in. I 
obviously the lip area often gets neglected. We put all these face creams on and we forget to do anything to our lips apart from put lipstick on. But it's just the same as any other section, section on your face. It needs a little bit of TLC every now and again. Uh, finding a lip tonic like this, something that is conditioning, MAC do a lip conditioner, anything like that. Even if it's just using lip balm, even if it's just using some Carmex or some Vaseline, Every time, every night, every morning and night when you do your skincare routine, remember to include your lips in that. So now we've completed all our steps. This is the finished look. And as you can see, we've not gone over the top with the contour or the highlight, but it still looks nice and glowy. We've not gone over the top with our products, so nothing's going to sink into those fine lines. Um, there's not a powdery residue, you've got no cake face going on, none of your wrinkles are going to fill up with concealer. So I tend to find these techniques work very well for mature skin. And of course, don't forget to set it with some setting spray. Uh, my favourite one for mature skin is the Hyaluronic Fix by Revolution. Again, anything that says Hyaluronic on it is going to be good for your ageing skin. I'm going to give a few spritzes of this. And there we have it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I started my raffle last night, the Valentine's raffle. Get on it. Buy some of those numbers. I've done 30 this time, so there's a chance for everyone to have a go. And numbers are £2 each, payable by PayPal or bank transfer. Just let me know. Inbox me if you haven't already got my details and let me know which numbers you want. But um, I've included this time a runner-up prize as well. Uh, so not only will the winner receive a full face of makeup, including lashes, to be used at any given time, uh, as long as it's within a 12 month period. Uh, there will be a runner up prize, which will be a gift voucher worth £15. That's half the price of a full face, including lashes. So you can have your full face done for just 15 quid, which is good, especially since we've got Valentine's Day coming up on the 14th of Feb. That's next Friday. Um, and I do still have a few appointments available. We're closing the raffle on the 10th, which is next Monday. So the winners will be announced at about 6pm on Monday evening. So, yep, yeah, join me for that raffle and join me next time for my next video. If you guys have got any ideas that you want me to look at next, then leave it in the comments. Bye for now.